fucking crazy! Oh shit! Never mind about all this see me, this see me, that bollocks! Ideological conformity. It's all good and well having beliefs, ideas, things you consider to be true. Ideology is a limiter. Very often there's an area of disagreement and there's some variation. The more extreme the party, the usual area of debate, of discussion, of difference is more limited. And when it becomes a question of conformity, that you must conform to the party line, that's when we're really talking about a dangerous ideology. It does no good to accept something as being automatically true. Surely if something is actually correct, it can be demonstrated, and even then, if you choose to disagree, you have the right to disagree. But forcing conformity is a very real problem, and it's one which damages the progress of society. Rather than allowing the continual development of individuality and new ideas, as well as, of course, focusing on the importance of the facts, instead you end up with ideology taking the place of thought, instead of thought leading the way and changing ideology. Just shut the fuck up! It very often goes without saying that the media has bias. And of course, as you look at more extreme sources for the media, the bias becomes even greater. The information they bring forward can vary to a great degree. The information they select, the sources they have, can differ massively. The narrative they project, the effect of the sub-editors and editing process, how they root out certain things they do not wish to express, how they embellish things they do wish to express, because that's their narrative, their demographic, who they're selling to. These things matter massively. Add to this the public relations machine. Whether we're talking about celebrities paying a certain company to do it for them, or whether we're talking about the government trying to present things in certain ways. Whatever the case may be, you end up with people presenting facts, and even producing false facts and statements to tailor the news as they would prefer, to silence their critics, and to, in many ways, project the kind of story they desire. And the main reason so many news sites can get away with it is because they're not even operating within regulated guidelines. They're not operating as newspapers and genuine news providers. They're operating as gossip magazines, as tabloid press or whatever the case may be, where they're simply running a story for the sake of running a story. And before you know it, you end up with legitimate news sources believing the story that's been presented. And you can easily have things called factual, called the news, even though it's a complete fabrication. You stupid effing bugger! It's always been easier to attack a person's character, to point out faults or potential faults, rather than actually dealing with the issues. If you can point out a negative aspect or something which can be perceived to be or suggested to be, an actual dangerous or subversive idea that this person may well have, that's far easier to attack and use as a focus than something serious, which would actually require some form of discussion, some form of debate. Instead, it's far easier to simply have the media machine do what it does best, simply chew over the story, regardless of the facts, and ruin any chance for a serious and adult conversation. In everyday life and discussion, it's far easier for a radical individual, a person with an extreme ideology, to simply label you as a communist, or on the other side of the coin, perhaps call you a fascist, call you totalitarian, or make references to George Orwell in 1984 to try and suggest that you're the dangerous individual, even though their own pet ideology is in fact somewhat dangerous in and of itself, and what you're suggesting is quite moderate and centre ground. In many ways, the watering down of terms is the problem where a person can throw around the term extremist for people who are moderate, call a person a cult leader who rules a cult even though it's merely nothing of the kind, or describe something as a scam simply because they disagree with the business policies involved. It's exaggeration, and it's typically used to justify an ideology, and that's the real problem. You bloody buggering bastard breast-faced Emotional arguments that have no bearing on the facts. Very commonly, 
Emotional arguments, those that provoke the emotion, are used to manipulate people. If you can make people act emotionally, you bypass their intellect. You manage to get around their rational thoughts and make them think a certain way because they're threatened by some great evil. Whether it's an actual enemy or a false enemy doesn't really matter as long as they're emotional about it, as long as they bypass their intellectual processes and cease to be effectively logical, you end up achieving your goal. Whether it's techniques to do with fear and who you should fear, or a great problem that we have to deal with, we must deal with this problem. Or whether we're talking about a wishful idea, about achieving a greater goal, a perfected futuristic utopia, a belief in a certain type of god, a certain view of the afterlife, or whatever the case may be, based on your greatest wishes and your darkest fears. You can have people base their entire argument on their own inner feelings, their own intuitions, where they don't even touch the facts. Or perhaps the things they call facts are merely the intuitions of others. What the fuck happened there? Dogmatic religious views. There are so many views out there that are dogmatic, and religious views tend to be the most dogmatic, on average. We can excuse some thoughts, some ideas, where people have personal opinions, they may choose to believe that an angel is looking after them, or whatever the case may be, and that does very little harm, but when it comes down to not accepting alternative views on what is actually going on, including actual science, that can be an issue. When people have political religious ideologies that are incapable of actually dealing with and accepting the facts, that is a problem. And when you have people rejecting mainstream science, and even medical science for the sake of their own particular brand of woo-woo, that is a major concern. Because it may well lead towards people's deaths far earlier than if they'd simply sought out actual medical attention. Thankfully, most religious people in the Western world aren't so backward. If you're secure in your belief, secure in your faith, with your dogmas, you should not fear discussing them, and of course accepting the facts as we learn them. You sad, pathetic winker! Swift judgments. Very often people jump to quick conclusions. They judge very quickly, they come to the end result very quickly, and very often they are wrong. And no, this isn't just people being critical of your belief, it's also people who actually believe in things. They're convinced of an idea, a persuasive argument, and because of a persuasive argument, they jump to conclusions. We don't know what created the Big Bang, and therefore, there must be a God, because that fits their worldview. The problem is, people with very set worldviews come to very set conclusions, and even people who don't have a set worldview as such will still jump to conclusions, because it's human nature. In many ways, it's counterintuitive. You might think you have a perfectly suitable idea, a belief about what's actually occurred, what's going on in whichever regard, and it seems to be perfectly reasonable, it seems to be perfectly logical. And yet, you don't know it's the case, or you might even believe that you know it. You might consider the facts that you have, if you have any, to be suitable, to be sufficient. Whereas in reality, you should really be doubting what you believe even when you think it's perfectly true. Retard alert class! Claims of ultimate knowledge. How many individuals out there claim to have the ultimate truth? To have the ultimate political ideology? To have the word of God in their mind? To communicate with ultimate powers, higher beings, and all sorts of other nonsense? And yet, what real value does this serve? The information they give is usually vague or dogmatic, and really doesn't have much benefit as far as the real world. You might call this complete devotion, blind faith or blind belief, because that's what it is in the end. If you claim to have the ultimate truth, what else is necessary? Because in the end, you have the ultimate truth. No one can argue with you, no one can debate with you, no one can change your mind, and it is only your job to preach the ultimate word whether it's the word of communism or fundamentalist Christianity doesn't matter because you have the ultimate truth. And of course those of us who don't accept your greater truth, those of us who don't accept the ultimate truth, God's truth or whatever the case may be, they must be ill-informed, brainwashed, deluded, 
To have ultimate truth, or to believe that you have ultimate truths, is very often to be confined by your own sense of ego. And this is reinforced even more to an even greater extreme when you become the mouthpiece of ultimate truths. What could be better for an egomaniac than to be the voice of God? No! No! Believing what you've read from limited sources, very often people believe stuff, even though the sources they've got aren't very good. And even if they are good, they're limited sources, or they accept a certain celebrity writer, a celebrity blogger, as being somehow more valid than any other person in that field, even though the argument they're making might simply be quite limited itself, and based around a particular context. You, instead of actually looking into the subject deeper, will simply take that idea, expand it to the full scope of that subject, say psychology, and as a result you end up with a very poor, a very ill-informed perspective on that subject. It's not because you're not looking at the facts, it's a question of you looking at only limited facts and not looking at them in full context. And as a result of looking at these limited sources for what you consider to be true of a particular subject, you end up being misled. A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Shut the fuck up! Supreme leaders. The problem with leaders is that they try and lead society when really they should be representing society. With supreme leaders, they have no need. They're not going to lose their job unless there's a major revolution, and if they control all the mechanisms of power, they have no worries. Religious zealots can control the people by threatening them with hell. Military dictators can use fear, and in any case, the propaganda machine never stops. With typical leaders, when they're too comfortable, too secure, they can get away with practically anything. Literally, they can get away with major crimes, and these crimes can be simply whitewashed. When power is great enough, dare I say even supreme, you end up with the ability to become the judging force. Not merely are you so powerful that you can avoid justice, you are justice. And as a result, there is no representation. It's the ultimate terminus of having leaders, as opposed to having people who represent the people. Instead, you end up with leaders who are merely representing themselves, but they use your goodwill, your best hopes and dreams, to get into the most elite positions of power. And when they don't need you, they could always get rid of you, treat you like garbage. And if it's suitable to use you if you're a minority or a suitable group to basically scapegoat you for a particular crime, it's all the better. If they can spread blame upon certain citizens, as opposed to taking responsibility for their own errors in power, it simply ensures their continuation. When governance is more about leadership than representation, it's not about governing for the people, it's about the governing of the people. Bloody hell! I thought you were dead! So there you are! 